So what can we conclude from this section? Well, we've learned a bunch about interrupts. We've picked up some stray assembly instructions along the way. The software interrupt, even though a normal interrupt typically comes from hardware trying to say like, hey, I need you to do something right now. But there's also a software interrupt to manually invoke an IDT handler. There's the interrupt return, which pops information back off the stack to get back to wherever and whatever the processor was doing before it was interrupted. There's the int1 and int3, int0 and ud2, various versions of software interrupts that have special versions of encoding or special behavior. And then there's the store task register and load task register for setting up the information about the task state segment used for finding the stack, lets the hardware find the stack when interrupt occurs. The store and load IDT, which loads up the IDTR or stores it out to memory, which we also saw as a little miscellaneous thing that the information disclosed by that is potentially beneficial to someone wanting to know whether or not they're in a virtualization system, all of the red pill. And then set and clear the interrupt flag used for masking interrupts if you don't want to be interrupted at a given point in time. But I think this is the more interesting point. This is our giant, you know, table of everything we're going to learn. And that's, this is what it looked like after our previous, you know, segmentation section. And this is what it looks like now after the interrupt section. So between segmentation and interrupts, we really covered basically all of this stuff. And what's left to do is to learn about paging and virtual memory management down here. So let's move on.